So let's take a look at a scenario since you've already gone through and understand how to do the subnetting portion. And we have two videos on that. We have introduction to subnetting and then subnetting examples. And I highly recommend you go through those before you dive into variable length subnet masks. All right, so here's our scenario. So how many networks do we need here? So let's count them up. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. However, when our routers connect to another router and we have a link between them, we need to put an IP address on this interface and an IP address on this interface in order to get this link to come up. So this has to be a network, so that's network 9. This one will be network 10. Here's network 11, network 12, and network 13. So we need 13 networks total here. So. Let's assume that our internet service provider gives us 10.0.48.0 slash 21. That provides us with a range of 10.0.48.0 through 10.0.55.255. And I've converted it there in binary the same way we've done it continuously throughout our subnetting exercises in this video. So if we were to do this a standard way then that we've learned subnetting so far, we would need four additional bits to borrow. So 13 networks required, we need to borrow four bits to accommodate that. So we look at that, draw our four extra bits into our mask here when we create this new subnet mask. Here's our given mask. Here's our new mask, that is everything up to our given mask, plus four more bits. And what we find out here is that that only leaves seven bits in the host portion, right? So seven bits are left in the host portion. If we look now in our calculator, we find that seven bits in the host portion gives us, we look up in the host column now, 126 hosts per network. So seven bits in the host portion, we get 126 hosts per network. Well, great. We need a network that has 25, one that has 100, one that has 75. The 126 hosts will work great there, but we also need a network that has 200 hosts, 150 hosts, 300 hosts, and another one down here that has 200 hosts. So this actually won't work at all. VLSM is much more efficient. So what we do for VLSM, and now the way we're going to set up this problem is we're going to set up this problem in order that we can solve this particular problem as efficiently as possible. When you begin to do this in the real world, you're going to find that you make your networks much further apart and you allow for much more flexibility with the number of hosts per network. However, our exercises here are designed to teach you how to do variable length subnet masking the exercise itself isn't incredibly practical in the real world. The second example I have in here is slightly more practical. However, when we're designing in the real world, we're going to find that we are going to allow for a lot more hosts than the ones that are required in our design diagram like this. Additionally, we're going to find ways to do something called route summarization. And route summarization is an extension of IP address manipulation. And we're going to learn how to do that in another video. For the time being here, let's set up the problem for variable length subnet masking. So in order to set this up, we're going to make a table. And the table that we have is going to list the number of host requirements in order from largest number of hosts to smallest number of hosts. So here's the table that I have. So we have a 300 host network, two 200 host networks, 150, 125, 175, 25, and then five networks with two hosts each. What I've done in this chart is I set up how many bits do I need in my host portion now to accommodate 300 hosts. So the second column tells me how many bits I need in the host portion. The next column is going to show me my network ID or the prefix. This is the network address that will host these 300 devices. And then the mask associated with that particular network. And what I want to do is I want to use this table then to fill out incrementally so we can calculate each network separately. Let's look at how we do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the number of bits we need for each host requirement. So for that we just need our subnet calculator 
And this time, instead of using the networks column of our calculator, we're going to use the host column of our calculator. And in the host column, here we need a network that has 300 hosts on it. Well, I can have a network that has 254 hosts or 510. So I choose the network that has 510. Next, I need several networks that have approximately 200 hosts each. To do that, I'm going to need 8 bits in my network portion. I need a couple networks that have between 100 and 125 hosts per network. I can use 7 bits in the host portion for that. We have a network that needs 75 hosts here, that'll also need 7. I have a network that needs 25, we'll look that up and it needs 5. And then the 2 hosts per network need 2 bits each. And it's not that hard to look that up in the calculator. You just look up the host requirements in your host column and find the number of bits and record it. Once we know this now, now we can start calculating network addresses. Let's start with 300. We need 9 bits in our host portion. So we're going to set up the problem just like we did for the traditional subnetting where we're calculating and finding how many bits we need to borrow to accommodate our network requirements. Now we're just going to do it in reverse. So here we have a need for a 300 host network where we need 9 bits in the host portion. So I set up my problem just like I did before, converting my address given to me by my ISP to binary, writing my mask right below it, and drawing a line between my network and host portion. Next, I'm going to calculate my new mask, except this time, instead of counting the bits in the network portion that I need to add, I'm going to start over here on the rightmost side and count to the left and count 9 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then I'm going to draw a line there between my calculated host and network portion. And then I'm going to fill in ones in my subnet mask, in my new subnet mask there, in between my given mask by my ISP and the new mask I just calculated by counting my host bits. Once I have that, I can then start calculating my network address. Now, for the first address in variable length subnetting, we're always just going to use the address that was given to us by the ISP. We're just going to change the mask on it. So we were given a slash 21 mask. We're changing that to a slash 23 mask. But the network address, that number, remains the same. We just changed it to 10.0.48.0 slash 23. Now, because networkers need to know the range of addresses, it's always a good idea to practice calculating your first host and your last host. Now, remember the first host, we just add one to our network address. That tells us the first host on that network. The last host on the network is always one fewer than our broadcast address. And the broadcast address always has all ones in the host portion. So to get our last host address, we just subtract one from our broadcast address. What happens now is now we know the first address in our range and the last address in our range, both from the network address and broadcast address, but we also know the first and last host addresses. What we do now is now we know what our network requirements are for 300 hosts, so we're going to add 1 to our broadcast address now. And when we add 1 to our broadcast address, that gives us our next network. Now, in much of the way that when we go from 99 to 100, we have to add that placeholder, or we put a 1 in the 100's placeholder, and then zeros in the 10's and 1's placeholders. So to go from 99 to 100, we have to put a 1 in that 100's placeholder. If we go from 999 to 1,000, we put a 1 in the 1,000's placeholder then, and we put zeros in the 100's, 10's, and 1's placeholder. Well, and much in that same way, when we add 1 to our broadcast address, our broadcast address is all 1's here, we add 1 to this, since we only have two values in binary, 0 and 1, we actually have to increment our placeholder that's 1 higher than all these 1's here. So we actually increment this next level placeholder, just like we do in decimal when we count. So our next value here in our host portion, now the host portion that I'm looking at here is now actually my given host portion because I've already calculated the network I need for 300 hosts here. So this network I need for 300 hosts, find out my broadcast address, I add 1. That makes my given host portion now 0100000000. Alright, what this is is this is my next network 
address. So we get 10.0.48.0 slash 23. That's a mask of 255.255.254.0. And it makes our next available address 10.0.50.0. And I can already assign that to my network with 200 hosts on it. What I don't know yet is what my mask is going to be. So what we'll do then is we'll take the binary conversion then of 10.0.50.0 and we'll start the process over again, except this time we're going to have a need for 200 hosts per network. 200 hosts per network needs 8 bits in the network portion. So now when you're doing this on your workbook, when you find your next available network address, you can just keep writing below this on your workbook to keep calculating your next and next and next available address. And I've given you two sheets of graph paper in your workbook so you can continuously add on to this and keep using this same sheet in order to do this. When you calculate your host portion, though, and you're drawing that line between your new network portion and your new host portion, in this case it's going to be 8 bits in the host portion. So we count off 8 bits here in our host portion, draw our line, and then fill in 1s in our subnet mask in between our given mask portion and our new calculated host portion. All right, so our given network portion to our new host calculated portion, we're going to put all ones in there. When you're drawing this line on your graph paper, make sure not to draw it too long because we're only going to use that for a couple networks and then we have to go on to some other number of bit requirements in the host portion. So keep that line nice and short on your graph paper because it's going to change a lot. This line here, the line between your given network portion and host portion, that one's going to continue on and persist throughout the entire subnetting calculation. Okay, so our next available network, 10.0.50.0. We need 8 bits in our host portion. We've calculated our new mask. We can now take 10.0.50.0 and start now figuring out our first host, our last host, and our broadcast address. First host is one more than our network. Broadcast address is all ones in the host portion. And our last host address is one fewer than our broadcast address. What do we do then? We add one to the broadcast address, and that will tell us our next available network, which now will be 10.0.51.0. So now let's take these in their 8-bit sections, convert it back to decimal, and fill in our chart. So, now we know that a mask for 8 bits is slash 24. The mask is 255.255.255.0. Our next available network, 10.0.51.0. And we once again need 8 bits in our host portion. So, when we go back to do our next problem here, our new mask is going to be the same as the previous problem, previous example. We need 8 bits in our host portion. We then carry down 10.0.51.0, find out our first host, our last host, and our broadcast address. And then what we're going to do is add one to our broadcast address to tell us our next available network. We then convert to decimal and fill in our chart. So our next available network is 10.0.52.0. Once again, we know we're going to need a 24-bit mask here because there's going to be 8 bits in the host portion. But we also want to figure out what our next available address is here. So let's go through the binary exercise again. So we take 10.0.52.0. We calculate our new mask here, which has 8 bits in the host portion. We carry down 10.0.52.0 as our network address. Find our first host, our last host, and our broadcast address add one to the broadcast address, and that will tell us our next available network, which is 10.0.53.0. We convert this to decimal and fill in our chart. So now we have a 24-bit mask here up for 10.0.52.0, next available address 10.0.53.0. This time, though, we have a different number of host requirements. So now we need a network for 125 hosts. To get that, we need 7 bits in our host portion. So, we take our next available network. We find out what our new mask is. This time, we're counting off 7 bits here in our host portion. When we count off 7 bits in our host portion, that means that we need to add 4 bits into our network portion. 
So we fill in ones in our subnet mask here. Now our new mask is a slash 25, as there are 25 ones in our mask. We then carry down 10.0.53.0. That becomes our network address with a slash 25 mask. We find our first host, our last host, the broadcast address. We add one to the broadcast address that tells us our next available network. We convert it to decimal and fill in our chart. And then we rinse, wash, repeat. Right, so we're gonna do this again. Take 10.0.53.128 as our next available network. We need seven bits in the host portion. So we do this again. We find out what our mask is. We take our next available network, 10.0.53.128. We apply the slash 25 mask, find our first host, our last host, the broadcast address. We add one to the broadcast address, and that tells us our next available network. Convert that to decimal. We get 10.0.54.0 as our next available network. We once again need seven bits in the host portion to accommodate 75 hosts on that network. So we go through the exercise again here. Find our new mask. We need seven bits in the host portion. So we make a slash 25 mask. That leaves seven bits in our host portion. 10.0.54.0 slash 25 becomes the network address for our 75 host network. We find our first host, our last host, and the broadcast address, and then we can calculate the next available network. So then our next available network becomes 10.0.54.128. This time we only need five bits in our host portion. So our next available network is 10.0.54.128. We need a network for 25 hosts, so we're gonna put five bits in the host portion. So to do that, we count off five bits in our host portion. We make the rest of the bits network portion. This gives us a mask now of slash 27. So our network address, 10.0.54.128 slash 27 is our new network address. We find our first host, our last host, and the broadcast address. Add one to our broadcast address, and that tells us our next available network. We can now convert this to decimal and put it into our chart. Now we're down to our two hosts per network networks. And we start that with 10.0.54.160. So 10.0.54.160 is our next available network. This time we only need two hosts per network, which means we only need two bits in our host portion. So we only need two bits in our host portion here. So when we calculate our mask now, we put two bits in our host portion. The rest of them we fill up with ones in our subnet mask. And our mask becomes a slash 30, or 255, 255, 255, 252. We carry our network address down, 10.0.54.160 slash 30. We find our first host. We find our second host, which is also the last host. And then we find our broadcast address. Now remember, we're using these two host networks on our point-to-point -point links. Because on a point-to-point -point link, we we'll have two routers that we're connecting together with one wire. There's only two IP addresses on that network. So in this case, our first address and our last address actually are the first and second addresses. They're the only addresses on this network. We then add one to our broadcast, and we can find out what the next available network is. We convert that to decimal and put it in our chart. So our next available network is 10.0.54.164. So let's go through the rest of these. Since these are all the same, we're going to have the slash 30 mask again. 10.0.54.164 in binary. Our first host, last host, broadcast address, add one, we get our next available network. Convert it to decimal and record it in our chart. Once again, we're going to have a slash 30 mask. If you notice now, when we have the slash 30 networks with two bits in the host portion, my network numbers are incrementing by four. Right, So we have network address of 160, my first host is that 161, my second host is dot 162. My broadcast address is dot 163. And my next network is dot 164. Then we have 165 first host, 166 last host, 167 is the broadcast, 168 is our next available network. 
So we should be able to predict and see that 172 should be the network after this, and 176 should be the network after that. So let's see if that works out that way when we do it in binary. So we put our 30-bit mask on, we find our network address, first host, last host, and broadcast, add one to our broadcast to get our next available network, and convert that to decimal, and sure enough, our next available network is 10.0.54.172. Let's do that again. 30 bits in the network portion, calculate our network address, our first host, our last host, the broadcast address. We add one to the broadcast address to get our next available network, convert it to decimal, and fill in our chart. And sure enough, our last network there is 10.0.54.176. We'll just verify that that's all correct and we have enough space for it. So we calculate our mask, which still is slash 30. First host, last host, broadcast address, next available network. Now we have a network assignment for every single network in our internetwork. And we used our 10.0.48.0 slash 21 to accommodate it. Now our first address that we used here, 10.048.0, is up there on the 300 host network. And the very last address that we have used up is the broadcast address for network 10.0.54.176. If we take a look at that, that broadcast address here, if we convert it to decimal, is 10.0.54.179. So 10.0. .54.179 is our very last address that we used. Well, our ISP gave us that range from 10.048.0 through 10.055.255. The range that we used up was 10.048.0 through 10.054.179. So we are within the range now that our ISP gave us, and we've accommodated all of our host requirements. Remember, initially we said we had 13 networks here, and we still do. But when we divided it up equally amongst all 13 networks, we only got 126 hosts per network. Now, when we use variable length subnet masking, we actually were able to use that same IP space and assign IP addresses to every single host in our network, meet our host requirements as well, and not go over what our ISP gave us. So VLSM is extremely efficient when assigning addresses to networks. Now I gave you another problem in here, so let's go through that. I'm going to go through this one a little bit faster because we already have the process down through this one. But what I want to do is I want to make sure I give you something to practice against as well as check your answers. So you can come back here and you can watch this second half of this video now and do the second problem and see if you can solve it on your own and watch the video to help you solve the problem if you have problems along the way. All right, so what we can do then is apply our network addresses then to each one of our networks and their host requirements. And now we have a fully assigned network with IP addresses for each host range.